two guys were waiting on the street for the pub to open and as they were waiting a funeral passed up the street one guy says to the other whose funeral is that it's joe smith his mate replied ah poor joe said the other guy do you know what he died of well, I'm not too sure, was the reply, but I don't think it was anything very serious. Now, we could be tempted to say the same about sin. But what Jesus is saying in today's Gospel is that the consequences of treating sin flippantly can endanger the salvation of our immortal souls. These days, there are many Catholics, many people, even Catholics, who deny the existence of hell despite it being mentioned several times in the Gospel today. Sister Faustini, the Polish nun whom our Lord appeared to in the 1930s, she was given a vision of hell. She said that most people who go there had denied its existence while they were in this world. Once a man told Padre Pio that he didn't believe in hell. You will when you go there, was the saint's reply. All sin, all sin is an absence of love, and it's a foretaste of hell to live in a loveless situation. They say that Yorkshire people have a reputation for calling a spade a spade. Well, that's precisely what we have to do with sin. Some people try to camouflage its reality by saying things like, I'm only human. To me, the person who is doing battle with sin is always more human and lovable than the person who has quit the fight. For instance, if we abandon the struggle to forgive someone who has really hurt us, then we're less of a human being than if we forgive them. Some people try to mask the reality of sin by calling it by a, a different name. Euthanasia in the news a lot these days, is often described as peaceful release. Whereas, in reality, it's ending a life considered by many to be not worth living. Some people consider shoplifting from a big store to be fair game because it's a big company and they won't miss it. Telling lies is often translated as being economical with the truth. So, we can rationalise away the reality of sin and even blame others for it. But if not repented of, it remains in the soul of the person like a cancer. So the, the death of the soul can precede by many years the death of the body. The effects of sin can be contagious as well. We can pass on its bad effects to the next generation. Of course, the same is also true of goodness and virtue. If mum and dad are married, for instance, there's a better chance of their children following suit than if they weren't married. Jesus sternly warns us in the Gospel today about giving scandal to children, to children and taking away their innocence. If anyone is an obstacle to bring down one of these little ones who has faith, they would be better thrown into the sea with a great weight round their necks. But the good news is that we can do something about sin. Some of the great saints of the church, like St. Paul and St. Augustine and even St. Patrick, they once were great sinners, but the grace of, by, by the grace of God they turned their lives around. Now wouldn't it be regrettable to let the grace of repentance go a-begging? It's readily available for everyone who desires it. Thank you all very much for listening today and God bless you all. Oh.